Well, I want you to take your Bibles this morning, if you would, and turn to Luke chapter 1. And I want you to hang on, okay? We're going to go a little deeper than we normally go. And uh, not too deep, but we're going to go a little deeper than we would normally go on a Sunday morning. But I believe when we get all done, I believe that uh, it'll be a blessing to you. And so Luke chapter 1, in your Bibles, and when you find your place, if you'll stand with us out of respect for the reading of God's Word, if you're able to stand, that is, Luke chapter 1, and uh, we're going to begin in verse number 26 and read down through verse number 33. Luke chapter 1 and verse number 26. How many are glad for your Bible? Amen? Man. Woo! It's good to be here today. Amen. And in the sixth month... The angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great. (laughs) And he shall be called the son of the highest. And I want you to notice this next line. The Bible says, And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob, notice these words, forever. And of his kingdom and of his kingdom, there shall be no end. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about this subject, the Christmas prophecy. You may be seated this morning and we're going to pray and ask the Lord to help us. He's already helping us. There's no doubt about that. And we're going to pray though because we need him right now. And as I said, we're going to go just a little deeper than we normally would, so we're going to pray that God will give us understanding today. And so let's pray, and we'll jump right into the Bible study this morning. Father, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being so faithful to meet with us at Calvary Baptist Church. God, thank you for giving us of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, that we feel your presence here today through the manifestation of your Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you the hearts are tender. God, thank you for ministering through the music and the singing. And God, surely you've done that today. I know you've ministered to me. And Father, I I pray that by the time we leave today that our hearts will be filled. And I pray that we will have done what you want us to do. Now, Lord, as we take a little time and try to uh, give your people the word of God I pray that you'd help us to say only that, that you won't say, Lord, I have a lot. I have a whole lot this morning, and, and uh, that's going to be hard to get it in in 30 minutes. But I pray that you'll help me to say what you won't say. And if you want me to leave something out, I pray I'll leave that out. Or, Lord, if you want me to say something that I had not planned on saying, I pray that I'll do exactly that. Holy Spirit, fall fresh upon us now. Fill us and guide in the service, and save the lost, and encourage the saved, and teach us thy word, please. And uh, Lord, hide us behind the cross, and protect us with your Holy Spirit today. We love you and praise you. We ask these things that Jesus might receive ultimate glory. In his name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. Verse 32, the angel said to Mary, and he, he shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest, and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father, David. And so the angel appears to Mary here, and he informs Mary that the Lord Jesus will eventually be given the throne of his father, David, that Christ most would most certainly become king. By the way, for those who are interested, that's not the first time we've heard that prophecy. In fact, we hear it several times through Scripture, 
But one of those times was way back as far as King Solomon. When King Solomon was reigning, you don't have to go there. I'll just read it for you. But in 1 Chronicles chapter 17, verse 11, the Lord was speaking to King Solomon, and he said this, And it shall come to pass, when the days be expired, that thou must go to be with thy fathers, that I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build me in a house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and I will not take my mercy away from him as I took it from him that was before thee, but I will settle him in mine own house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. And so God comes to Solomon and says, Solomon, I'm going to raise up a king And this king is going to be a little different from your kingdom. His kingdom is going to last forever and ever and ever. And he'll always have my mercy. I'll be his father. He'll be my son. Uh, And so, again, when we come to the New Testament, the book of Luke, we read this morning, the angel of the Lord comes to Mary and says that God is going to give you a son, even though you're a virgin, And he said that son is going to to, to, to finally inherit the king, the kingdom of David, uh, and he's going to have an everlasting kingdom. Now, uh, I want you to understand something, that in order to have legal right to the throne, you must be in the bloodline of David. Now, Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus, is most certainly in the lineage of David, but there's a problem. Joseph's line through David has a curse placed upon it. In the family line of Joseph, we have a king by the name of Josiah. By the way, I encourage you to go back and read about Josiah. In my opinion, one of the greatest kings that ever ruled was King Josiah. He was a young man when he took the throne, and God used Josiah to call the kingdom back to him, and he was a great, great king. But Josiah had a grandson. And his name was Jeconias, or Coniah, the Bible calls it. And Jeconias was a wicked, wicked king. He didn't fall in the ways of his father, and he was a wicked king. And the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 22 that the prophet Jeremiah pronounced a curse upon Jeconias and all of his sons after him. That was Joseph's line. And he said this, that none would be worthy to sit on the throne of David. I'm not going to take the time to read that this morning, but if you're taking notes, you can find that in Jeremiah chapter 22, verses 24, and then verses 28 through 30, where that curse is placed upon the line of Jeconias uh, and all of his sons after him. So there's a curse through this side of David's line. There's a curse placed on all those who came up uh, after Jeconias. There's a curse placed upon them. And the Bible says that those men would never be able to really reign as the rightful king. But let me give you something that's really neat. Joseph was Jesus' legal father, but he was not Jesus' physical father. So physically speaking, Jesus was not in the bloodline of Jeconias or Joseph. So technically that curse that Jeremiah the prophet pronounced upon Jeconias and his sons, that curse never transcended to Jesus. But let me show you something that's really amazing about our God. Not only was Joseph's lineage back to David, but Mary, the mother of Jesus, was also in the lineage of David. We find that in in the Gospel of Luke. If you want to turn over there real quick, Luke chapter 3 We find that it's lengthy. We won't read all that today, but I encourage you to go back and read that. And sometimes when you skip over the genealogies, you miss a great truth. And in in Luke chapter 3 and verse 23, the Bible says, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph. He was not really Joseph's son. Uh, And being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, which was the son of Mathat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi, and it goes on and on and on. Now, this is actually actually the lineage of Mary. Now, it mentions Joseph there, but only by virtue of marriage. Often back in in Bible days, when they were given the lineage, the, the wife was often not mentioned. 
And so it does mention Joseph here in this line, but only by virtue of marriage. And so this is marriage, uh, whereas Matthew is Joseph's lineage, Luke is Mary's lineage. And her lineage goes all the way back to King David, but without a curse. And so legally, Jesus was in the line of David through Joseph, his stepfather. But physically, Jesus was in the line of David through Mary, his biological mother. Now, you say, Pastor, is that a big deal? That's a really big deal. And let me tell you one of the great truths that we learn from what I just told you was this, that Bible prophecy is always accurate. It's always accurate. And so prophecy said, there's going to come a king and he's going to sit on the throne of David and his throne is going to be forever and it's going to be blessed and I'm going to give him mercy like I've given no other king. I will be his father, he will be my son and his kingdom is going to last forever and ever and ever. And just like Bible prophecy said it was going to happen, my dear friend, that's exactly what came to pass. You see, Bible prophecy is always accurate. Now, I want to be quick to point something out. I didn't say prophecy. I said Bible prophecy. Just because someone claims to be a prophet doesn't mean what they say is true. In fact, our Bible says in Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils in the name of many wonderful works? And then I will, I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So anybody who says they're a prophet doesn't mean they're a prophet. But I will tell you this, if it's in the word of God, you can go ahead and you can write it down. You can take it to the bank. I'm telling you, if by Bible prophecy says that it's going to come to pass. Guess what? Get ready. It's going to come to pass. Bible prophecy is always accurate. Now, can I just give you a few examples of what I'm talking about today? How about this? Number one, I noticed the Bible prophesied of the virgin birth of Christ. In fact, if you want to turn over there, you can. Isaiah chapter 7 would be a good verse for you to, to memorize or to look at, especially in the day we're living in today. Uh, Isaiah chapter 7, the prophet Isaiah, and I get this, church, the prophet Isaiah, 700 years before the Christ child was ever born, prophesied this was going to happen. In Isaiah chapter 7 and verse number 14, the prophet Isaiah said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, I'm not preaching a message on the virgin birth of Christ this morning, although if I were going to, it would be definitely worth you coming to hear, that's for sure. But as I was just, uh, this was just one little example I wanted to give you today, but, but this week I was just trying to freshen up on that a little little bit. And as I begin to look and study and do some research, you know what, church? I never realized that the virgin birth of Christ is such a controversial subject. The more I studied it out, the more I thought, is this, I can't even believe this is the case. Did you know recently, I'm not, I'm not preaching against anybody this morning necessarily, but I'm just giving you the facts. You can check it out. You don't have to take my word for it. You can go do a fact check yourself. Did you know recently the Catholic Church has released a new version of the Bible and they change Isaiah 7, 14 to say, instead of it saying, behold, a virgin shall conceive, it says, behold, a young woman. Well, there's a big difference in a young woman and a virgin. And the Bible says here that a virgin shall conceive. I also read that there are a lot of scholars. Uh, a lot of these scholars are self-made scholars, by the way. And uh, now they've been to this university and this college and this seminary and all these kind of things. And they've got enough degrees after their name, you know, where they look like a, they look like a thermometer. But, but they said this. They said, you know, in all actuality, uh, many people say that Isaiah 7, 14 is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. But we have no evidence that Isaiah the prophet was speaking of Jesus 700 years in the future. We have no evidence that Isaiah was talking about that I thought really then why in Matthew chapter 1 
And verse 22 and 23, when the angel himself came to Joseph and said, Joseph, this is what God is getting ready to do, and it's supernatural in, in origin. Uh, why did that angel quote Isaiah chapter 7 to verse number 14? And he said, behold, a virgin shall bring forth a child. I'm telling you, listen, if, it, if it's in the word of God, you can guarantee it's accurate. How about this? The Bible prophesied of Bethlehem. The Bible prophesied that the birth of Christ would take place in Bethlehem. Micah chapter 5, verse 2. You're not, you, you want me to turn to all these places. I've got tons and tons of scripture this morning. But Micah 5, verse 2, the Bible says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. And so years and years and years before uh, anybody ever thought about Bethlehem, the prophet came and said, there's going to be a little town called Bethlehem. And in that little town, a virgin is going to give birth to the Messiah. How about this church? The Bible prophesied of the, the nativity star. That star that we talk about, that star we'll talk about tonight and sing about tonight. Did you know the Bible way back in Numbers chapter 24 and verse 17, the Bible says, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel, and shall smite the corners of Moab, and destroy all the children of Sheth. Somebody says, preacher, where do these wise men get the idea that, that this star was going to take them to the Christ child? Right there they got it. They learned this many, many years in advance. Just interesting, interesting stuff. We find here the Bible prophesied that Jesus would be preceded by a forerunner. Isaiah chapter 40, verse number three. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. And so hundreds of years before John the Baptist ever came on the scene and began to preach and begin, begin to be that forerunner for Jesus, Bible prophecy told us it was gonna happen that John the Baptist was going to come and that he was going to precede the Lord and preach and prepare people for God. How about this, church? Did you know the Bible even prophesied that Jesus would enter Jerusalem on a colt? Zechariah chapter 9, verse number 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt. The fall of an ass. And so, once again, we see the Bible is, is prophesying of things that are going to happen. Now, hang on to your hat. But I noticed this. I noticed that the Bible prophesied of the very day that Jesus would make his triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. Now, get your Bibles open this morning if you wouldn't. I want you to turn over to the book of Daniel. And we'll only stay here for just a few moments. But I want you to turn over to the book of Daniel uh, because this really, this really challenged me this week. Daniel chapter 9, in your Bibles, and look at verse number 24, if you will, and I promise you, I'm going somewhere. You say, Pastor, what does this have to do with me? It has a lot to do with you, and, and I'll, I'll bring it down where you can understand it here in just a moment. Daniel chapter 9, and verse number 24. Now, if you go back and read Daniel chapter 9, you'll find out that Daniel is seeking God. He's fasting. He's pouring his heart out to God. He's confessing his sin. He's trying to get an answer from God. And in Daniel chapter 9, we find that there's a spiritual warfare that's going on. But God finally gives Daniel this revelation. In Daniel chapter 9 and verse number 24, uh, Daniel says this, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the, the most holy. Verse 25, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem under the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks, the street shall be built again, and the wall even in trouble sometimes. Now, I know I've got a danger here that I could lose you, but I hope you'll hang on tight with me this morning, if you will. In other words, God gives Daniel this revelation, and this is what Daniel is saying. From the time that I received this revelation 
until the rebuilding of Jerusalem. By the way, we read about that in the book of Nehemiah when they came back and began to rebuild Jerusalem. From the time that Daniel receives the commandment, until the time that Jerusalem is rebuilt, until the time that the Messiah makes his entrance into Jerusalem. Daniel says, I'm gonna tell you how many days it's gonna be. It's gonna be seven weeks of years and three score and two weeks of years. Now you say, Pastor, what does that mean? So basically, uh, seven weeks of years and 62 weeks of years is 483 years. And Brother Tony was asking about this other day, preacher, how many days were in the, the calendar back in Bible days? And back in uh, uh, back in, in Jewish days, there were 360 days in the calendar year, and so if you take uh, if you take uh, uh, 483 years, now hang with me now, 483 years times 360 days is 173,880 days. Now you say, preacher, you done lost me. Well, get back on because you don't want to miss this. This is what Daniel the prophet said: 173,880 days before it happened. Daniel said. Said on that 173,880th day, the Messiah is going to ride into Jerusalem. And guess what? On that 173,880th day, the Messiah, sure enough, just like the prophet said, rode in into Jerusalem. Now, you say, preacher, big deal. You better know it's a big deal. In fact, if you go back and read your Gospels, we read early on, people said, you need to reveal yourself. You need to reveal your, yourself. And Jesus said this, my time is not yet come. You know why? Because Jesus knew what I'm preaching today, that Bible prophecy is always accurate. And he knew what Daniel said, that on that 173,880th day, I'm going to enter into Jerusalem as the Messiah. And so they said, Lord, you need to promote yourself. And Jesus said, my time has not yet come. But on that 173,880th day, he rode into Jerusalem. Y'all remember that? And the Bible says they, they cast palms into the, into the streets and they took their clothing and they put clothing in the streets and they said, it's the Messiah, it's the Messiah, it's the Messiah. And the Bible says the Pharisees rebuked them and they came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, shut them up, shut them up, shut them up. And Jesus said, if I shut them up, he said, the stones will cry out. Why? Because my dear friend, it was time for, for prophecy to be fulfilled. The Messiah had come. Just like Daniel said he would. The, 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 the prophecy came to pass. How about this church? I noticed this. The Bible prophesied concerning the crucifixion of Christ. Now you can just jot it down. Isaiah chapter 53. And we won't read all of that this morning. But Isaiah 53 verses 3 through 11. Can I read verse 5? And the Bible says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He's brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So opened he, so openeth not his mouth. And so you understand that centuries and centuries and centuries before Christ ever came and was nailed to a cross, the prophet Isaiah said, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. And he said this, it's gonna happen exactly like this. You say, what happened, preacher? Sure enough, it happened. And it happened just like the prophet prophesied that it would. You see, Bible prof prophecy is always accurate. We don't have the time to go to all these did you know in Psalm 41, verse number 9, the Bible prophesied that Jesus would be betrayed by a friend? Did you know that in Psalm 22, verse 16, the Bible prophesied that his hands and his feet would be pierced? Did you know that in Zechariah chapter 11, verse number 12, the Bible prophesied that he would be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver? And in Isaiah chapter 50, verse number 6, the Bible prophesied that Jesus would be spit upon and beaten? That in Isaiah 53, verse number 12, the Bible prophesied that Jesus would be crucified with thieves. And that in Psalm 22, verse number 8, the Bible prophesied that people would gamble for his garments. 
And then Zechariah chapter 12 and verse number 10, the Bible prophesied that his side would be pierced. And then in Psalm 34, verse number 20, that although he would be emaciated, not a, not a bone in his body would be broken. You say, preacher, what are you, what are you trying? What's your point? My point is, everything the Bible said was going to come to pass, came to pass. Every biblical prophecy was fulfilled. For all you, and I don't think there's any in, here, in this building, but for all those skeptics who want to say, well, I, re I really don't know if we can trust this Bible. Well, you'll excuse us while we do. Because every prophecy that God said was going to happen, guess what happened? It happened. And it not only happened, but it happened in very specific detail, just like the Bible said it would. And I told you I'd bring this down where it'd help you. Practical application, here it is. If these Bible prophecies that I just talked about all came to pass, that means something else. It means that all the other Bible prophecies are going to come to pass as well. So Isaiah said 700 years before it happened, a virgin is going to give birth. And somebody says, but preacher, how? Let me tell you something. You'll never wrap your mind around God. And if you can comprehend God, he's not very much of a God to comprehend. 700 years before it happened, the prophet said, it's going to happen in Bethlehem. Years and years before it happened, he prophesied, Jesus is going to come. He's going to be crucified. His hands and his feet are going to be pierced. His side is going to be riven. Bible prophecy is accurate. Now you say, Pastor, what does that mean? It means this, that Bible prophecy that tells us that Jesus is coming to remove his church by way of the rapture is also going to be fulfilled. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Let me tell you what else Bible prophecy says. It says this, that the rapture of the church may happen at any second. Amen. At any second. You say, Pastor, it's not going to happen today. The Bible says when you least expect it. That's exactly when it will happen. Did you know the Bible also tells us that the rapture of the church will happen so fast and so quickly you'll not be able to prepare? You say, Pastor, I don't believe anything you said today, but I'll tell you what I'll do, Pastor. I'll make a deal with you. And, and if you say what you say, if it comes to pass and Jesus comes and the trumpet sounds, if I see it, I'll believe it and I'll get saved. I got some bad news for you. There won't be any time for that. Before you know, know what happens, it'll be over. And Christians will be with the Lord and the lost will be left. Did you know that Lot and his family are, are probably a picture of the rapture of the church? And in Lot's story, we find that a part of Lot's family were ushered out, but many were left behind. Elijah, I believe a picture of the rapture. Elijah was caught up to heaven, but others were left behind. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about Bible prophecy that tells us those who are born again will most certainly inherit eternal life in heaven. We're, we're about done. Turn over quickly, if you will, with me to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. And look at verse number 24. Bible prophecy that tells us those who are born again will inherit eternal life in heaven. Revelation 21 verse 24 says it like this. And the nations of them which are what? Which are saved shall walk in the light of it. 
And the kings of the earth, you bring their glory and honor into it. John 3, 16. You can quote this without your Bible, can't you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Did you know that's going to happen? For those of you here today who are born again, you know that you know that you know that you're saved. You've given your life to Christ. You've turned your life. You've given, you, you know, you've, you've given your heart to the Lord. And you know that you're saved. The Bible says that we're going to inherit eternal life in heaven. You say, preacher, don't believe it. You will. You will. You say, pastor, what are you talking about? I'm talking about Bible prophecy that tells us those who are lost will suffer separation from God in a place called hell. You're in Revelation, so look at Revelation 21 and verse number 8. Revelation 21 and verse number 8. Now, church, this is what I'm saying. Just as sure as the virgin birth of Christ, prophecy came true. Just as sure as the prophecy on Bethlehem came true. Just as sure as the prophecy on the crucifixion came true. Just as sure as the prophecy concerning the nativity star came true. This one's going to come true as well. Revelation chapter 21, look at verse number 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, again, we're done. But this is what I'm saying. We better get ready. Because Bible prophecy is always, always accurate. And the Bible prophesied that Jesus would come the first time. But the Bible also prophesies that Jesus will come the second time. <laughs> and when he comes the second time, he's not coming as a lowly babe in a manger. Amen. He's coming as prophet, priest, and king. And he will rule and reign forever and ever and ever. And the Bible says he'll rule and reign with a rod of iron. And those who are saved will rule with him. And those who are lost will spend eternity in a place that was originally designed for Satan. And that's a place called hell. And I, wanna, I just want to encourage you by saying this, Calvary, you can trust what the Bible teaches. You say, but pastor, I can't understand it all. Well, welcome aboard. Neither can I. But you don't have to understand it all to just trust it by faith. And if God said it's going to happen, regardless of whether you can quite comprehend it or grasp it, guess what? It's going to happen. <laughs> if you understand it, it's going to happen. If you don't understand it, it's still going to happen. Amen. Bible prophecy is accurate. You can trust what the Bible teaches. I love this little story. Some of you have heard it. A boy was sitting on a park bench with one hand resting on an open Bible. He was loudly exclaiming his praise to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is great. Man, he just yelled it out without worrying whether anyone heard him or not. And shortly after, along came a man who had recently completed some studies at a local university feeling himself very enlightened in the ways of truth and very eager to show his enlightenment, he asked the boy about the source of his joy. And the boy said, it's amazing what God is able to do. He said, I just read in the Bible that, that God opened up the ways of the Red Sea and he led the whole nation of Israel right through the middle. The enlightened man laughed lightly. He said this as he tried to to enlighten the young man concerning the realities of the miracles of the Bible. Young man, that can all be very easily explained. You see, modern scholarship has shown us that the Red Sea in that area was really only 10 inches deep at the time. And it was no problem at all for the Israelites to wade across. Doesn't that sound like a liberal? It was just 10 inches deep. The boy was stumped. His eyes wandered from the man back to the Bible, laying open in his lap. The man 
content that he enlightened a poor, naive young person to the finer points of scientific insight, turned to go. And scarcely had he taken two steps when the boy began to rejoice and praise louder than before. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The man turned around to find out what his jubilation was about, and the boy said, Wow! God is greater than I thought. Not only did he lead the whole nation of Israel through the Red Sea, but he topped it off by drowning the whole Egyptian army in 10 inches of water. You can trust what that Bible says. And there's going to be some times when you're going to come and preacher's going to preach on some things you're not going to quite understand it. And there's going to be some times when you're going to go in, in your personal quiet time and you're going to read things and you're not going to quite understand it. But Calvary Baptist Church and all those watching by way of live stream today, rest assured, if the Bible says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. It's going to come to pass. Would you bow your heads with me this morning all over the house? Can I ask a question or two today? How many, first of all, how many are here today with heads bowed and eyes closed and, and you would say, Pastor, if I died today, I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I would go to heaven if I were to perish today, car accident, stroke, heart attack, COVID. Preacher, if something were to happen today, I know beyond a doubt that I would be in the presence of the Lord. If that's you, as a testimony, can you just slip your hand up right now? Thank you so much. You can lower your hands. And what a great opportunity that is to raise our hands and say, we know that we know that we know. Can I ask a second question? I wonder if there may be one here today and you would at least allow me to pray for you. It may be your first time. You may be watching by way of live stream. But you're here today and you say, Pastor, I could not honestly, I could not raise my hand with full assurance. And if I died today, I'm not 100% sure that I would go to heaven. Pastor, I'm sure I want to go. But I'm not sure I would go. And I need you to pray for me. Is there one like that anywhere this morning? You just slip your hand up right now. Just raise it up. Can I pray for you right now? Pastor, if I died, I'm not sure that I would go to heaven. Would you pray for me? I see that hand. Is there another? Preacher, if I died today, I'm not 100% sure. Would you pray for me? Would you at least just pray for me? You'd slip your hand up right now. Is there another? Just raise it up and sort of wave it at me. I see that hand. Is there another? Can I pray for you? Pastor, if I died, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about heaven. Could you pray for me? You'd slip your hand up. Can I pray for you right now? Oh, listen, Calvary. There's a heaven to gain, but there's a hell to shun. And there's only two, there's only two, two realities. You're either saved and going to heaven or you're lost and on your way to hell. You say, Pastor, that's pretty blunt, but that's as simple as I know how to put it. Somebody says, well, preacher, you see, I've got it figured out. When I die, I'm not going to hell. I'm going to purgatory. Well, there's a big problem with that one too. You see, you can't find that any, anywhere in Scripture. It's not in there. If you're here today, say, Pastor, if I died, I'm not sure about heaven. I haven't raised my hand yet, but I'll raise it now. Is there another? Anywhere? Can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? Anybody else? You're here this morning and say, Preacher, I'm saved. Maybe the devil has come and tried to get you to doubt God's Word. Maybe there's something going on in your life right now, something difficult, and boy, the devil has come and tried to get you to doubt God, doubt what his word says, doubt that God's going to bring you through. Hey, child of God, I just want to remind us, you can trust his word.
You can trust Him. Would you stand with us all over the house this morning? Father, we thank you for this time we've had together today. Thank you for the Bible. And Lord, thank you for its accuracy and its authenticity. Lord, thank you that what the Bible says is true. What it says is going to happen comes to pass. And Father, help us to keep in mind that all these other prophecies that the Bible talks about are likewise going to come to pass. For those who raised their hands this morning and said that they're not sure that they're saved, God, I pray today they would come and let us take the Word of God and show them how to be born again. Father, give them courage. Father, it's very possible that that there's someone here that did not raise their hand, and yet they're not sure about their salvation. And Father, whether they raise their hand or not, I pray that you'd give them courage to come. And we want to try to help them right now. Father, help nobody to leave this place unsure of where they'll spend eternity. Lord, that child of God that's battling right now with some things that are going on in their life and the devil has come and tried to get them to doubt, today may they find, Lord, a place of help on this old-fashioned altar. Have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts, I pray, as only you can. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'm going to ask our personal workers if they would slip out and make their way to the front. If you're here this morning and you raised your hand and said, Pastor, I'm not sure that I am saved, would you come? Or if you're here this morning and you did not raise your hand, but you say, Pastor, I'm just not sure I'm born again. Oh, listen, let this be the day. December the 19th, 2021. As we get ready to go into a brand new year, uh, 2022, If the Lord comes in 2022, would you be ready? Would you be ready? Say, preacher, I'm not ready. Well, come on and get that way. We're going to pause just for a moment. Pastor, I am saved, but I need to rededicate my life to Jesus Christ. I didn't mean to let it happen, but I sort of got away from the things of the Lord and I just need to rededicate my life. The altars are open. You come this morning. Preacher, we're not the member of a good Bible-believing preaching church, and we feel it the will of God to to join with this local body. And God's dealing with our heart about that. The altars are open this morning. Pastor, I've been saved, but I have not yet been baptized, and I need to be baptized, and I need to make myself a candidate for baptism. If that's you, listen, you come. I'm going to make my way to the main floor as well. And if we can pray with you or help you, we're, again, we're not going to pull on the invitation, but we're going to pause just for a moment. If you're watching the live stream right now, we're so glad to have you listening. And there's a number on the bottom of your screen. It's our prayer helpline number, 704-327-5662. We have somebody right now that's waiting by the phone to take your call. Would you call us? Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. Would you call us? We have someone waiting with a Bible who wants to help you. If you're watching today and you say, Pastor, I've got what feels like an insurmountable burden. I don't think I can, I, I don't think I can get over this burden. Would you call us? And we'd love to pray with you over the phone today. I believe God with you. Father, I pray that you're working hearts today. Lord, we're going to bring this thing to a close here in just a moment. But Lord, maybe in the quietness of this moment, maybe there's just one more that needs to make a move. If that's the case, I pray you help them to come. Have your way in this time. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Let's just keep our heads bowed just for another moment or so. We're going to sing a chorus here in just a second, and then you're you're going to be on your way.
Hey, can we sing this chorus real, real quick? And we're going to let you go. If you need to come, the altars are still open. Personal workers are still here. Let's sing it. Here we go. Ready? All to Jesus I surrender All to Him I freely give I will ever love And trust Him in His presence daily On that chorus I people said amen I had this little poem I didn't give it to you but I love this little poem somebody said it like this if I should live a thousand years and search it every day the precious word of God would still shed light upon my way should every earthy uh, every other earthly thing be severed from my grasp I pray that I may ever hold my Bible to the last and someday when he calls me home and I at last can look upon his face I want to kneel and thank him for his book and I'm so glad you can depend on it. Amen. Amen. Well, we've got a few decisions this morning. Miss Angel Speaks comes today. Miss Angel. Most of you know Miss Angel. This is Miss Janie's daughter. And uh, she, she comes today. Two things. Number one, she comes rededicating her life to Christ today. Amen. But also she comes today wanting to join the church. Amen. She's been scripturally ba- been uh, saved, been scripturally baptized, and we mentioned to her about the new members class, and she said absolutely. And so we rejoice with Miss Angel's decision today. And I know God's got big plans for her. And so do I hear a motion this morning that we receive her in? Brother Ricky, we'll let you make that motion. And uh, <laughs> Brother Mike and Brother Donnie and Brother Drake together. All right? I'll make that motion that second. All in favor, say amen. 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 Miss Angel, I'll be the first to give you a handshake here. Welcome in. Amen. Thank you. You can get your seat over there by Miss Tammy. And uh, I'm not going to ask Angel to stay up here in front of the church today, but be sure you find her and give her that right hand of fellowship after the service today. And Timmy, you and uh, Carrie and Abigail, come on up here if you will. Well, God works in mysterious ways. And uh, we never, I'm not going to say never, but uh, usually never, we never hardly ever like to lose anybody. Um, but if we're going to lose someone, this is the way to lose them. And so uh, Tim and, and Carrie feel it's the will of God. They feel like God has something for them to do in ministry. And so they are surrendering to go to Bible college. And so they are going to be uh, going to Brother C.T. Townsend's college down in Augusta, South Carolina, Victory. And they're going to be training for a while. And so what I told them is this. If God doesn't leave you, lead you anywhere else, you get trained, come back to Calvary. Amen. And we'll have something for you to do here at Calvary. But, uh, but they, the reason they're doing this is because they want the blessing of the church. And by the way, this is the way to do it, by the right. way, is to do it with the blessing of the church. Amen. And that's, that's the way that God blesses. And so they wanted the church to know about that so you could pray for them and lift them up in prayer and Pray that God would give them uh, direction, uh, exactly what they should do. There's a lot of things they need to do and, and still some things that are unforeseen. So how many will pray for the Painter family today? Would you do that? Amen. And so you find them after the service and shake their hands and let them know that you're, you're praying for them and lifting them up to the Lord. Amen. Brother Tim, bless you, buddy. Appreciate you. Amen. Abigail, Miss Carrie. Well, Meredith is asleep back there. She has such great trust for the preacher. She just says, you know, preacher, I trust you, and you go ahead. And, and so uh, anyway, anyway, we love you guys. And listen, I hope you have a great afternoon, and we'll see you tonight at the 6 o'clock hour, all right? Brother Rick, would you come up and dismiss us in a word of prayer today? Heavenly Father. We thank you for allowing us to be in your house this morning, Lord. Just thank you for your many blessings, Lord. 
Lord, we thank you for the message we heard today, Lord, and the prophecy of the Bible, and Lord, and just thank you for that. Lord, we pray for the decisions that were made. I know there were a couple of hands that were raised that weren't sure of their salvation. Uh, from what I understand, Lord, I pray that you would just help those folk get it taken care of before it's eternally too late, Lord. You know what they need. And Lord, thank you for the decisions that were made here, the uh, rededication of a life, and then joining the church, Lord, and then uh, the painters, Lord, as they'll be leaving to go to uh, Augusta, South Carolina, to a, to a Bible school, Lord. I pray that you just bless them, Lord. And Lord, just help them. Use them mightily, Lord. They're, they're reaching out to you uh, for, for your help. And Lord, I pray that's what you'd do. And Lord, uh, just give us a good day. Keep us safe, Lord. Uh, uh, take us to our home safely. And Lord, I pray that you just bring us back this evening safely and just uh, help us honor and glorify you in all that we do. We love you and we thank you. In the name we do pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. We consider it an honor to serve you. And our prayer is that the service was a blessing and an encouragement to your life. If you were impacted today by the preaching of God's word, we encourage you to respond. If we can pray with you, or if you would like to make a decision today for Christ, please call us here at 704-327-5662. We have people waiting right now on the lines prepared to help you. Again, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to welcome you again soon. Have a wonderful week.